This is an introductory lecture on exponents. We're going to start with repeated addition. In other words, I'm going to repeat adding the same value to itself four times. We have a way of simplifying that, and we say that is four times I had three, or in other words, 12. If I want to replace that with a variable, such as x, which just represents any number I want, that is going to be 4 times x, or 4x, depending on the value of x. Now, we have a system for repeated multiplication. We're going to condense it. We don't want to show 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, just as we didn't want to show 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. We want to condense it. And so what we do then to condense it is we write it as an exponent. So in this example, my base is 3, and I'm multiplying it by itself four times. So the exponent is this little value called a superscript, and this big number down here is called the base. So let's write that out just a little bit clearer. If I have a raised to the b, a is what we call our base. And it is what is being multiplied. So what is being repeated? And the little number b, whatever that might be, is going to be the exponent. And that tells me how many times to repeat the multiplication. And we'll show some examples of that here in just a minute. But when we look at exponents, we're really going to have three essential types. We're going to have a positive value in the exponent position. We might have a negative, or we might have zero. So we need to kind of look at what those might really represent. We're going to go back then and look at our place values. When I look at place values, we had 100. That was my hundreds, my tens, my ones. And then we would have that decimal. And on the other side of the decimal, we had our tenths, our hundredths, and our thousandths. We're going to rewrite this in terms of exponents. This is 10 squared. This is 10 to the first. So I'm kind of envisioning here a pattern. This is 1 over 10 to the first, 1 over 10 to the second, and 1 over 10 to the third. So if we take a look at the pattern here, it looks like my exponent goes 2, 1. So I'm decreasing every time. So this is going to be 0. And then my exponent goes to the denominator. So what we want to do is look for a pattern in this. And we're going to have 10 to the second, 10 to the first, 10 to the 0, 10 to the negative 1, 10 to the negative 2, and 10 to the negative 3. And so a negative, therefore, looks to be a fraction. So when I have a positive exponent, that would be like my 10 squared. That means I have 10 times 10, or 100. Another example might be a fraction, 1 half cubed. What we're going to do is just expand that. It just simply represents 1 half times itself three times multiplying fractions, multiply the numerator, multiplying the denominator, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. Negative exponents, if I look at the example, it said 1 tenth was equal to 10 to the negative 1 power. So if we take a look and analyze that, this negative exponent is representing a fraction. It really means it belongs in the denominator. So if I have 2 to the negative 1, that just means 2 belongs in that denominator. If I have x to the negative 4, it means that x belongs in the denominator, but the power still says multiply it by itself four times. Four times I multiply x by itself, but the negative is telling me the position in relation to the division bar in which the x will go to. So if it's in the top, 
simply mo moves to the denominator. And lastly, the power of zero. From our pattern, 10 to the zero power is one, and so we're gonna use that as a definition. Three to the zero power is one. Anything, whatever number you want to the zero power will always be one. And all of this came from looking at this pattern in our place value. Positive values, zero, and then negative. And from that pattern, we were able to see the relationship between a negative exponent and what it would be like if I wanted it to be a positive exponent. It would land in the denominator. Here's the relationship in my ones position. According to the pattern, it would have a power of zero. And that happens no matter what the base is.